Yo and hello everybody, Mike here, Baseball Collector, and I tried to shoot this video yesterday. I did shoot it. The problem was my mic kind of crapped out about five minutes in, so I thought I would reshoot it and try to light everything better just to show these cards off a little bit better because this is my favorite drawer in the Beast, and it is because it houses all of my... Um, bigger in, in terms of size larger hall of fame autographs uh the tall boys so to speak the placards the postcards government postcards you name it and so there's just so many great hall of famers in this box in this drawer that i wanted to show them off i thought i was getting close to being done with my beast rummage stuff but i just had to I forgot about this drawer and I'm like, God, this is my favorite drawer. So I thought I would show these off again and be able to post this to YouTube in a better way. Um, so here we go. Just a huge amount of Hall of Famers. I'm going to do this in two parts. This will be part one, which will be the first row, and I'll do the second row in part two. But the first card you see there is Louis Aparicio in a Perez Steel Hall of Fame postcard. Mint 9 autograph. Love it. Next up, is that one Luke Appling um, great Hall of Famer Luke Appling no, no there goes Norman Norman dude you don't need to be in the video seriously you don't need to lo lick Luke Appling you're not Pepino man come on let's go out of this shop come over here lay down Luke Appling <laughs> You never know what's going to happen. Never know. Next up is Earl Averill. This is a postcard. So it's just random stuff. Not, not random stuff, just a bunch of different stuff that all is kind of the same size. This autograph is in Near Mint 7. You know, grading autographs is so subjective to me, and it, I, it baffles me all the time how PSA DNA comes up with what they grade things. But... They didn't ask me, so whatever. Next up, I got a lot of sideways autographs, so I'll hold them as best I can this way. So here's a Frank Home Run Baker. Norman, seriously, dude. Frank Home Run Baker, near mint seven, like a cut from a check or something. That's cool. Hall of Famer Dave Bancroft, and near mint eight. On an index card. Next up, Perez Steel Hall of Fame postcard of Ernie Banks. I just love the artwork. I mean, obviously, Dick Perez did all this. They're just fantastic. Next up, Hall of Fame umpire Al Barlick. Ed Barrow and I love it also when index cards are dated so you can really tell how old the item is this one's dated 531 1949 I love the weird color of the index card all of it just really cool to me next up the great chief bender and this is it says government postcard you can see that over there and what's cool about government postcards I'll turn this over so on the back, typically, you'll have a stamp. This was a two-cent postcard. And the person who it was sent to, and you have the postmark, which this one is 1953. So that's super cool. Next up, Jim Bottomley. Your Mint 8 autograph on that. So a lot of people ask me, Mike, why do you get your autographs graded? Like, why does it matter? Just as long as they're authentic, isn't that enough? And the answer is, yes, that's enough. But in order to show up on the registry for Hall of Famers on the PSA set registry, the autograph has to be graded. So, which kind of, I don't know, seems silly to me. I mean, if you didn't have it graded, it was just authentic. You should just get a one. But again, no one asked me. 
Here is a slabbed Lou Brock Press Steel Hall of Fame postcard. I love this next one. We've got Mr. Roy Campanella, three time MVP for the Brooklyn Dodgers. This autograph is post accident, so after his car wreck when he was paralyzed, he uh, all his autographs after that are, are really shaky and kind of done assisted, I guess, is maybe a word to use. Uh, he, he couldn't sign, you know, completely himself, so, but Mint 9, beautiful celebration postcard there. Here's a great Pirates and Dodgers Hall of Famer, Max Carey. I love the extra little inscriptions and notes written by the player. Always love to see that. I told you I got a bunch of different stuff. Here's one of them. These were awesome when I was a kid. These 83 Donruss, you know, I don't, all-star cards, I think they were called or something. Beautiful Gary Carter signature on that one. Next is A.B. Happy Chandler, Executive Hall of Famer, Jim Mint 10 on the autograph. So I have that Happy Chandler on the Hall of Fame postcard. I have this Happy Chandler on a yellow placard. Uh, there's all kinds of different Hall of Fame placards that were made. Lots of them are signed. This one's beautiful just labeled authentic and that's fine because I already have a 10 on the one you just saw next up Nestor Shylock who is a umpire Hall of Fame umpire I love this one it's inscribed to Ted be a good sport I think that's a good good advice for life right there you've got Hall of Famer Fred Clark if you're looking at these and going, man, I don't even know who these people are, go look them up, man. You'll, you can learn a lot about the history of the game and all sorts of cool stuff by finding out who these people are. Fred Clark, great Hall of Famer. Another one, Mickey Cochran, great catcher. Awesome, Mint 9 autograph, beautiful. This is kind of different. Um, Historic Autographs is a company that, you know, takes autographs and kind of repackages them and sells them. Uh, here comes Norman again. Dude, you're killing me. Can you please can you come over here? Here. Back to Earl Combs. Uh, they label these, you know, this one's like four of four. Earl Combs was part of Murderer's Row for the Yankees. So this is from a product in 2010. They just kind of repackaged stuff there. We got Hall of Fame umpire Jocko Conlon on his Perez Steel. Lots of umpires in this. Here's another one. This guy is really, really tough. Uh, Tom Connolly. So this is an index card and says sorry I do not have a late photograph or something or a, a, I don't know what it says over there that last letter or last word cordially Thomas Conley very cool I showed you guys the yellow Hall of Fame placards there's other ones these are called Dexter presses and they're in these beautiful colors there's orange and blue and all kinds of different colors of these similar uh, in vain you can see this autograph got a six and and that actually makes sense if you see how streaky the autograph is and, but nice Stan Kovaleski there's one of him and I have another one right here on this just kind of cut photograph thing just labeled authentic another cool one here Wahoo Sam Crawford what a great player he was. And I love how it says this person must have been sending TTM to him for a while and he finally got a desist. Like, stop it. Stop sending me stuff. Beautiful near mint eight there. 
we got not one, but two Ray Dandridge Hall of Fame postcards. One on the left is PSA, obviously, and the one on the right is SGC. It's in their new holder, so obviously they've stopped authenticating autographs. SGC has, so those are neat. Next up, Mr. Dizzy Dean. Just all-time great pitcher. I love the little dots that he sticks inside the Ds. See, how is that not a 10? Like, I don't... It's a 9, and that's fine, but I don't really get the autograph grading sometimes. Got a few of this guy. I'll put them out. One, two. So there's Joe DiMaggio. We got the Perez Steel Hall of Fame postcard on the left. Beautiful Mint 9 signature on that. On the right, 93 Pinnacle. That's a card that I got graded at the National. I've had this card for a long, long time and just thought it would look good slab because it's a really weird size and wouldn't fit in a binder, wouldn't fit in a you know top load or anything. So what pisses me off about it is the they did a horrible job in casing the autograph they actually have a way to do that where it's nice and tight, so I don't know what idiot did that, but thanks a lot. Thanks, PSA. Is that one. Next up is Mr. Bobby Door. Beautiful Mint 9 on that one. Bobby Door, one of the most prolific Hall of Fame signers ever. Great TTMer, um, just all around great ambassador for the game. Don, Dandy Don Drysdale. The ones that aren't ought, that aren't graded, like why aren't, why aren't they all graded if you have some of them graded? It's because I just pick them up because I can get a good deal. I need the Hall of Fame postcard, period. I don't necessarily need it graded. I already have a Jim Mint 10 Drysdale autograph, for example. So that's why that is what it is. Uh, here's another, man, uh, not manager, um, umpire Billy Evans very very tough autograph but again how is that only a near mint seven it's beautiful again whatever PSA here is a beautiful Bob Feller again near mint eight really and we got Norman's over here gnawing on my hand so there's a uh, Rick Farrell. It's gorgeous. Look at the colors of the card, and I mean, seriously. Another Hall of Fame plaque here. The modern guys have usually only this one, the yellow one, and uh, Carlton Fisk here. Love you can read what the Hall. I just love seeing what the plaque says. All of that stuff. So cool. Sometimes back in the day, like here is uh, Elmer Flick's plaque, pla placard, but he signed it, oop, wrong way. He signed it on the back. That happens a lot with the older guys. They would sign the back. So near mint seven autograph on that. Very, very tough. I have another weird quirkiness about what I like to collect, and, and this card is the perfect example of it. This photograph of Nellie Fox shows him as a coach for the Rangers back in the early 70s. And if there's a Hall of Famer that has ever worn a Rangers uniform as a coach, manager, player, whatever, I want to try to find an autograph of that. I'm still looking for a Ted Williams in a Rangers uniform on his like 72 tops card or something. I don't have that, but man, this is really, really cool. And uh, Nellie Fox is hard enough as it is. I think this might be my only Nellie Fox autograph, period, actually, now that I think about it. And because uh, he's really tough. And he always signed in ballpoint pen. I mean, I hardly ever, don't know that I've ever seen a Nellie Fox not in a pen like that, but very cool. It's the only one I've ever seen him signed. 
in a Rangers uniform. I had to have it. So next up, we got Jimmy Fox, double X. Awesome, awesome autograph here, Mint 9. Beautiful postcard. Uh, postmarked January 20th, 1941. Good grief. 78-year-old autograph right here. Beautiful. I love his autograph. Very flowing, beautiful. Next, we got another executive here. Ford Frick. And a near mint to mint 8. And it's cool to get the index card slab too because, again, you get them in a slab. They're hard to store anyway. And so if you can just get them slabbed up. Frank Frisch here. The Old Flash. That was one of his uh, nicknames back in the day. Frankie Frisch. Another cool set that Perez Steele did is this one here called Masterworks. Each player has five different patterns or or whatever, and uh, they're based on old time sets. So the left one's like kind of like a Ramley looking set, and the right's kind of like a Allen and Ginter old Allen and Ginter card. And these were all done in 1990. Again, each, there's I don't know 10 or 15 players in it. Each player has five different cards. So there's two of the Garingers. Those are the only two I have of him. The one on the left's just authentic. The one on the right, Mint 9. But it looks like a 10 to me, but beautiful. I actually like this better, this form, this way of doing it, because I can stick two cards out there at a time if I want. There's a Bob Gibson. You'll see this a lot on these Perez Steels. If they're older autographs, they do tend to bleed and fade. That's not uncommon. So there's Gibson. Another executive, Warren Giles, Hall of Famer. I guess I don't have to keep saying Hall of Famer. They're all Hall of Famers. God, tell me how pretty that is. Lefty Gomez, just gorgeous. This next one's interesting. So Hall of Fame manager, Joe Gordon, and this is like a custom that somebody did. I mean, it is butt freaking ugly. I mean, the cheesy stars, the horribly cut out picture, but it's still a Joe Gordon autograph and it's a mint nine on the auto, but it is so ugly that it's kind of cool. That's kind of how I look at that. Here we go with Goose Goslin, near mint eight. have a Hank Greenberg plaque. I love Hank Greenberg's autograph. I love the sweeping G at the end. It's so awesome. I got two of this guy. I'll just put them out because they're just index cards. They're not that big a deal. But you've got Hall of Fame owner Clark Griffith. He owned the Washington Senators. The Stadium was named after him. Eventually, Griffith Park is where the Senators played. You got a Jim Mint 10 on the right, which is always good to get Jim Mint 10s. There's Burley Grimes. I love it. it. says, one of the great spitball pitchers. Back in the day, you could throw a spitball. Grimes, a very prolific signer as well. There is Mr. Lefty Grove in a mint nine. Love it. Chick Hafey. Again, you're like, I've never heard of these guys. We'll go look them up. Jesse Haynes. William Herridge, executive. Bucky Harris, 
Hall of Fame manager. Gabby Hartnett, Jim Mint 10. Harry Heilman, God, what a great career he had. Definitely worth looking him up. Beautiful, very, very tough autograph too, but beautiful autograph. I mean, look at that. These guys used to know how to sign, man. Not like today's players, for darn sure. We go with Billy Herman, Hall of Fame postcard. Getting towards the end. I got three more, guys. Three more. Here's Harry Hooper, great Red Sox player. Won several World Series with them. Mint nine on that one. There is. Another Dexter Press. You can see the beautiful blue there on the Hall of Fame plaque. Wait Hoyt. Mint 9 autograph on that one. Great pitcher for the Yankees. And last one for this row is this guy right here. Cal Hubbard. Cal is the only man who is in both the Football and Baseball Hall of Fames. He was a referee and an umpire. So, not an easy autograph to get from him either. Mint nine on that one. So, there you go, guys. There's row number one, part number one. I'll do part number two. Come check it out. We'll talk to you guys later.